on. Well, welcome to the show. It's the first of uh, many, I hope, featuring our panelists, Derek, Christian, and Mike. Tonight, we're going to start off the show with a question from our viewers. It goes out to, to Mike. Among the many over the years, this is from John uh, out in Santa Barbara. He says, uh, among the many over the years, what are the best rivalries that you've seen in boxing? Oh, one of the newest ones today has to be the Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder. That rivalry is going back pretty far right now. Is that still um, ongoing? Uh, yeah, it's still ongoing. They're they're supposed to they're supposed to fight again for a third time. Well, that's after you know Tyson Fury uh, decided not to fight, coming out of retirement, Mr. Mike Tyson, as uh, Mike Tyson launches his two, his new League of Legends. Hmm. Anybody anybody know about that? No. So what's going on? Oh, well, Mike Tyson has decided to uh, set up a league for the old timers called League of Legends. All right. Yeah. yeah. And he's bringing out all the 50 something year olds to uh, put the gloves on uh, one more time. But this time they're more like pillows instead of gloves, 16 ounces and some headgear. So let's see how that starts to work. Right on. Right on. Uh, one of my favorite old rivalries had to be Mike Tyson and Vander Holyfield, though. And then we all know that ended with uh, an ear missing. <laughs> <laughs> Before we went uh, live to air, I was just mentioning to Derek that uh, I, I saw a YouTube clip of Roberto Duran and uh, Sugar Ray Leonard, and I, and I actually remember watching that fight. It was actually, I, I think it was in the Montreal uh, the Olympic Stadium uh, back in the early 80s uh, after uh, Sugar Ray Leonard won the gold at the Olympics in 76. Oh, wow. But anyway, I, m I remember actually watching that fight uh, on TV. Uh, that was before my time. I was still a twinkle in my father's eye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my only uh, my only relation to boxing in the, that part of the '80s would have been uh, Mike Tyson's Punch Out if that was around '87 wow. on NES. So that would it yeah. was a few years before me as well. Absolutely. I, I remember like the, uh, the George Foreman and Muhammad Ali fight. I remember the, uh, I remember the Manila and Thriller. <laughs> Thriller and Manila. Thriller and Manila. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> No, my, my first fight was was uh, was Tyson Holyfield. Uh, and I would have been like 12 or 13 years old, you know, visiting the grandparents. And I had an uncle come flying into the room and throw me off watching, I think, probably Goonies or something for the 700th time for the television. And then I was furious until he told me that Mike Tyson himself was about to be fighting. And, you know, that name when as a kid it was just like it was bigger than life. You know, nobody could beat Tyson. And he sat next to me going, no, Holyfield's going to take this. No, no, Holyfield got that. I thought he was insane. Especially Tyson comes out, you know, right off the bat and brilliant. And then eleven rounds later, you know, I'm I'm my entire world was shattered when I found out that Mike Tyson could lose. Yeah, oh, don't, you, you gotta remember the the Evander Holyfield Riddick Bow as well. That was a good one. Good rivalry. Yeah. That goes way back yeah. to the nineties. <laughs> <laughs> way back. Do you think uh Tyson was perhaps the most feared, is the most feared, when I was the most feared. Uh, people say today yeah. he's still he's still the most feared man that to ever grace the boxing ring. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Like if, you, if you look at his training videos today, it's, it's – honestly, he looks better today than he did in the last couple of years of his career. Really? He just has so much power. Like, he, he, he just wields so much power in that unique sort of peekaboo style too, right? Which he invented, don't forget. Yeah, with Custom Auto, right, his trainer. Yeah. Yeah. Customato was probably one of the greatest trainers to ever, ever be in the WBC, to be honest. To be able yeah. to take take power like Mike Tyson and be able to harness it and, and, and give him the proper tools to be able to execute it the way he did. And yeah. just, yeah. you know, Mike Tyson's highlight reel speaks for itself. Yeah, well, he's still pretty quick. so much, oh, it's so scary. much power. He's, he's scary. Like, he's, just, he's just one he's guy. Just, it doesn't matter just... how old he is. You never want to get hit by that guy. No. It's just something no. that I don't even look forward to doing. I, has, I've been hit many times. Yeah. <laughs> He's just got so much speed and so much power, right? Yes, it's, definitely. And, and I mean, it's it's going to be interesting what happens um, uh, in the upcoming fight, the ex Roy Jones. What, yeah, Roy with Jones Roy Jr. Jones, which they which they kind of they kind of think it's a uh, exhibition match, but who know, I don't think it's going to uh, be not, an exhibition not, not, at not, not all. According to, not according to Mike Tyson. No, it's it's he's he's training he's training to take his head off and just you know. I, I think both of them are training hard because they know, and especially Roy Jones, like you step into that ring with you better be ready. 
you know? Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Roy, Roy Jones is a, one of those, you know, another one of those guys that just, you know, we, we grew up, we grew up in a really good time of boxing, to be honest. Yeah. Like it was really moving forward as, as an art itself. And it, and nowadays it's just sad that it, it doesn't have quite the following that it once did. Well, it kind yeah. of got, all got drowned out with the MMA stuff. Uh, you know, yeah. when UFC first started, you know, and it was actually pitting different styles against each other. It was kind of interesting. Mm-hmm. And then it just kind of devolved. Everything became MMA and it just kind of overshadowed uh, boxing. Yeah. Which, which I believe is one of the reasons why UFC did that whole inter, I guess, interbout between Conor McGregor and uh, Money Mayweather. I think it was to bring a whole new fan base to boxing, to bring a younger generation, you know, to show, to show these people that are watching UFC to be like, Hey, look, there's another combative sport out there. And it's ex- exciting as hell. Well, people yeah, are getting you, sick, you know, sick of the guys. grappling matches. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. If you like the grapple, well, grab the grappling part of fighting is still good too, but it's not as exciting as watching guys throw some fists. Yeah. I mean, the, the headshots that are received in a boxing match, I don't think even compare to anything in the UFC. Like, no, no, it, it's, I, just, I, I, it's I've staggering. Heard some weird, I've heard it's some staggering. weird statistics. I've heard, yeah. I've heard statistics like twelve rounds in a super heavyweight boxing match is the equivalent of being hit 180 times in the head with a two by four. Ugh. Wow! So no yeah. wonder these guys end up with Parkinson's and <laughs> dementia and Alzheimer's. It's it's just as bad as football taking those shots to the head like that. They used to count uh, stats like uh, guys who have lost fights but have never been knocked down. So, I mean, there, there are names out there. That are not, I'm not familiar with these guys. But, I mean, can you imagine I mean, these guys going to fight the ring, fight after fight after fight, knowing uh, that they're, they're probably going to lose, but on uh, you know, standing counts and, in fact, points. So I think boxing has had to deal with that kind of dilemma as well. You know, wh- whether the best fighters are now recognized over the years, anyway, as being those fighters who could actually knock out the opposition. Yeah, absolutely. But I do think it's coming back. Um, one, one of the, I mean, you take a look at the, the content that's online featuring these, these rivalries, featuring, featuring these fighters over the years who have stood the test of time. I mean, there's nothing more exciting than seeing two guys literally pound the hell out of each other somehow remain standing. Yeah. That, br- that brings me, that brings me, it reminds me of uh, another rivalry, which was the Pacquiao and Marquise rivalry. That was a really good one. It was one of the greatest ones in the 21st century until the Floyd Mayweather fights. Is Manny Pacquiao getting back in the ring? Uh, I heard, I heard he's thinking about getting back in the ring. Yes. Uh, I no, heard he's I getting I... into cryptocurrency. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Well, I guess everyone needs a side gig. Yeah. Well, Paco, Paco's last bout, I believe, was uh, 2012 against, no, maybe 2014. So he's been out of the ring for, I th- I'm pretty sure it was that long ago. Like the fourth fight between him and uh, Marquise was on the 12th, the, uh, 2012, I think was the last one. And then there was a couple of Mayweather bouts there. So he was only in it for a few more years. So he's been out, he's been out of the game for a long time. And he was, what? in his late 30s, early 40s then. So maybe he'll come out and join that League of Legends thing that Mike Tyson's trying to get going. Well, he's been, a, he's been a senator uh, ever since 2016, so. Oh, wow. Yeah, wow. In, in the Philippines, yeah. Well, I guess, you know, I guess if Jesse the Body Ventura can do it. <laughs> <laughs> but I've heard that Pacquiao is considered the best pound-for-pound fighter. There ever Honestly, was. one of my favorite fighters to watch. Yeah. I believe his work ethic and his speed just it's it's an exciting fight every time the man's in the ring. I would definitely love to see another Floyd Mayweather and him fight again. Like that 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 was a great that, those were great that was probably my f- most favorite rivalry was Mayweather and Pacquiao. That that went on for years and it was great. Those guys hated each other and every time they got in the ring they tried to leave it in the ring. But you know, it's just they felt they were outbested or didn't put up enough enough of a show. So it always just kept going on and on and on. And when you get fighters like that, it's it's hard like with fighters like Pacquiao and Mayweather and Marquise and those guys, in those small weights, unless unless you're devastatingly knocking these guys out, they're gonna be on top for their entire career. Like a lot of these guys went, you know, 
Like, look at Mayweather. What is he, 50 and 0? Wow. Like, undefeated. And, you know, there's not too many lightweights or flyweights and stuff like that that even that even can do that. So it's, a, it's an impressive, impressive. All right, our producer's telling us uh, we're running out of time, so we've got to uh, wind up our first episode here. All right. Uh, Great. I'll uh, just end it off uh, just uh, asking a roundtable, you know, any last comments before we close out the show, Derek? Uh, no, it's, it's exciting to, uh, to be part of this and, um, and to, uh, for us to discuss a little bit more about boxing and boxing history and current events with boxing. What was your greatest knockout you ever saw? I don't know about knockout, but I'll tell you, you know, sort of chiming in on, um, I think what Mike was saying is that I grew up in the, I grew up in that era of, um, you know, I guess it was like the post Muhammad Ali era. And then, you know, then you go through a couple of them, like there was uh, Michael Spinks. And then I think it was Trevor Burbick. And oh, then yeah. after that, then, then, and I used to watch all these as a kid. And then after that, then you get into, um, then Mike Tyson takes it. Right. And then you get into the Tyson era and like, he was a phenomenon at the beginning. I think the first 19, uh, the first 19 of his fights were all knockouts. And I think 12 in the first round. So like, it was this buzz and excitement that can this guy actually be stopped? Like, is he unstoppable? Right. And there's no flashy, there's no show. He just walk in with a towel around his, like a cut towel down. I don't know if you remember that right around his, uh, over his head. That's that was true. it. And like, and people like you, you'd almost see guys melt in the ring when like he just stood with them. Like they, they were scared out of their mind. And as and it goes even to this day, I mean, look at the guy, right? Like he, he's, he looks in great shape. Like it's uh, Appa- apparently he's apparently he's gone vegan and uh, it's, oh, yeah. it's done the best for his physique. His training is absolutely incredible. And yeah. honestly, he finished, he finished his career 50 and six with 44 knockouts. So Is that it? That was the that, stat? Wow. That's a stat, right? And, in, you know, in 27 of his lo- those fights, I think Compu- CompuBox landed around, he said they landed around 56 of all of his power punches. Wow. Yeah, which is 15, which was 15% higher than any ever, any heavyweight average ever. That's great. Jeez. That whole peekaboo style is what did it for him. That peekaboo <laughs> style just, it was something that nobody was used to. Everybody was, you know, used to that dancing around, he was he was that new guy, a lot smaller than some of the heavyweights. I believe he was only five ten. Um, you know he's got a he's he's out, he's outreached, and when you're outreached, yep. you got to play inside the pocket. And yep. unless you're a fast fighter, yeah, you're yeah. not going to be able to no. did not take the damage. Like that well, damage the, comes. Yeah, like you, you almost know, that think that style is is the style that does it. It, yeah, because you're almost you're almost under the radar of the jab, right? You can, right. you're inside of the jab, so you're you're safe. So if you're shorter, then it actually it's a good style. Yeah, no, it's it's great right in there. I, I'm 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 looking so forward to seeing him get in the ring again. And I don't care how big the pillows are on his hand, and if you're wearing yeah. two headgears, you're still gonna get knocked out by his power punches. It's gonna <laughs> happen. Roy Jones Jr. is going down. <laughs> Christian, last comment. Uh, first I use, uh, Mayweather was 49 and 0, not 50. Oh, uh, you there know, you go. R- Roy Jones is actually, uh, sitting on a bigger record. He's 66 and nine with 47 KOs. Oh, oh, battle, battle of the big wigs right here. And, and, yeah, and, and he's got an inch on Tyson as well. Oh, he's got an inch on him. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. But, but I think, he, I think he has a longer reach though too. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah. So uh, let's see, let's see that peak boost out. I wonder. I want, it's going to be funny to see the peekaboo style though with a big headgear on. <laughs> that is true, but memorable knockout. You know what? And it was it was Lennox. We've been showing a lot of love for Mike Tyson tonight, but it was it was when Lennox Lewis beat Tyson. Uh, I enjoyed that. I was in I was in a bar, and I said, "Nah, Tyson doesn't have this fight." And I was the only one in the room, and I got a lot of booze for that. And then I was vindicated, and Len left the bar very very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> but it was memorable it sticks in my head <laughs> that's good that's good well thanks very much for uh, joining me in this conversation no uh, problem i hope, uh, hope you had Thank a lot you. of fun we'll see you next week definitely and, uh, for the viewers out there please subscribe to our channel and uh hit that little uh, bell icon for notifications remember keep those fists up gentlemen
<laughs> no, we don't want to hurt that pretty mug. You're the, you're the looks of the group. You're the looks of the group. See you next week, lads. Yes, definitely. Thank you. See you guys. Good night. Good night.